Hello electronics enthusiasts, welcome to Projects, Topics, and Electronics. Today I'm going to show you my design for an NRF24L01 Plus dev board. Obviously the board contains a Nordic Semiconductor NRF24L01 Plus chip, but my design also includes a 33 volt regulator and power amplifier. Um, I wanted to show you this design as I was doing it, however I decided to record after I'd already created the design and gotten boards and stuff. So, But anyways, today I'm just going to show you the schematic and a lot of the big points on the data sheets that I used during the design process. As you can probably see already, my preferred development software of choice is KiCad. Now I use ORCAD and Eagle at work, and where I found those softwares are pretty good in the at the professional level. Uh, KiCad is just great for on your own DIY. Uh, creating symbols is really simple. I've taken a few boards from you know start to finish through KiCad now and uh, just overall really great free software. But anyways, let's move on to the schematic. So here is my schematic for the dev board. As you can see, as I mentioned previously, it contains the Nordic Semiconductor NRF24L01 Plus chip, power amplifier, and a 3.3 volt regulator. Now one thing I want to make sure I mention right away here is this chip, the NRF24 chip, is actually a transceiver, meaning that it can transmit and receive. However, by placing a one directional power amplifier in, I've actually limited the capabilities of the chip uh, in that this board can now only transmit since I've put this power amplifier in there. Now I do these designs kind of a step at a time. I had made some previous boards that had just the chip on them, you know, that I could transmit and receive on the same chip. Uh, you know, however, they, it, they didn't have the range. Just the chip itself did not have the range I was looking for. So uh, in this design, I'm putting a power amplifier in. I'll only be able to use it in a TX, RX configuration between this board and one of the other boards with just the chip on it. You know, probably in the future, I'll have a bi-directional design and so on and so forth. But anyways, uh, you know, this, this circuit 2 may look fairly complicated, especially if you don't have any formal education in electronics. However, I will say this design was actually quite simple, and most of the layout on here is pulled right from the data sheets, which I will show you right now. So this is the NRF24L01 Plus data sheet. Right away on the front page here, there are some really good points. Uh, first line, if I can get just that to highlight. Uh, so the chip operates at a carrier frequency of 2.4 gigahertz, which is the same frequency that Wi-Fi and RC transmitters operate. And that's about all you need to know about that. Moving down a few lines here. Highlight just this one line. Moving down a few lines here is the output power, which is 0 dBm, or 1 milliwatt, which is really not much at all. So prior to this design, I had actually... Um, place just the chip on a board and tested out the range in my house and the range was about one room. Uh, you introduce any kind of wall or obstruction in there and the signal just is not powerful enough to get through. So that was actually the main motivation between or behind uh, designing a power amplifier into the board. So moving down here, move actually to page 10. So on page 10 we have the pin assignment. Now I can't go through what all of these pins do and obviously I can't cover the whole data sheet or it would be a few hours long session. But basically here everything on the left is what will interface with the microcontroller of your choice. And if we move down to page 11 here, oh, right here, we also have some descriptions of each of the pins, just some quick descriptions. Moving down to page 11 here, another important point. Uh, do not try and power this from the 5 volt pin on your Arduino or whatever you're using or you'll probably fry the chip as the maximum source voltage is 3.6 volts. Now we got some of that out of the way, we can move on to the fun stuff. Page 62 here, we have the PCB layout and decoupling guidelines. Now, this is a very good read, definitely read this part um, when you do your layout has some recommendations for how to lay out the board for the NRF24 chip. Also just some really good guidelines for RF board design in general. So I definitely recommend reading this portion as well as reading the, you know, most of the rest of the data sheet as well. But then moving down to the next page here, we have the best part of the entire data sheet, which is the application example or the recommended layout. Um, it's really not too bad. There's not a whole lot of components here. 
the really nice thing about this is they give you a matching network to 50 ohms output impedance, which is awesome because 50 ohms impedance matching in RF in the RF industry is pretty standard. So a lot of things are matched to 50 ohms, uh, and it makes things really convenient when you can just work with the same impedance all the way across the board. It's really nice. And actually, if we move up a few pages here, yeah, right here. So they recommend for the impedance matching of the chip that you use this mess of a load here. But you can see that in the application example, they already gave you a nice matching network to get 50 ohms, which was nice for choosing the power amplifier, which I will move over to that data sheet right now. All right, so this is the data sheet for the power amplifier. Right away in the features here, we have a few key concepts. The small signal gain of this device is 20 decibels. Now, don't get dB and dBm confused. They are not the same thing. I don't have time in this video to go through the differences, but if you're not comfortable or familiar with working in decibel units, I would highly recommend doing some research as it is a key concept in RF design. Then moving down to... A really important point, the input and output impedance of this power amplifier is 50 ohms. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the NRF chip has this nice impedance matching network to 50 ohms. So when you're designing RF circuits, you want all of the components or main sections of your signal trace to match impedance-wise. So I have 50 ohms output impedance here, I have 50 ohms input impedance here, and the output impedance is also 50 ohms, and my antenna has an input impedance of 50 ohms. So everything in my signal trace is in unison, and all the, impedance ma all the impedances match. Moving down a few lines. Don't try and power this chip with more than 6 volts. You'll probably fry it. Don't feed it an RF input power greater than 10 dBm, which we're fine in this case because I'm only feeding it a signal of 0 dBm from the NRF chip. Then moving down, this is kind of more the bulk of the data sheet. Now, as I already covered under the features, uh, the chip has a gain of 20 decibels. However, you look, and you might ask, well, this has a uh, this is at the test condition of 2 gigahertz. So what is it at 2.4? Well, if you go down to a graph like this, we can see that at 2.4 gigahertz, the gain is still at around 20 decibels. So we're good there. And that's actually a really good thing to pay attention to on all of your power amplifiers. So you may, you know, just at a glance look at a power amplifier and be like, oh, wow, it's got 20 decibel gain. That's good. Except then you go down to a graph like this and you see, at, oh, at your frequency, this, you know, this maybe slouches off or, you know, and at, two, and at your frequency, you don't actually have 20 decibels. So just another thing to watch out for. And then the last thing I just want to make a point of on this data sheet is the one decibel output compression point. Now, this point is basically where the power amplifier stops behaving linearly. Um, so at this case, the output power at 20 decibels, the gain will have dropped one decibel. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, we're, we're getting an output power of 20 dBm, but actually the gain's dropped one, so the gain's more like 19 at that point. And I'm not an RF expert by any means, but basically you just want to stay below this point and you'll be all right. So you want your input signal to be, mat to be mirrored perfectly on the output of your power amplifier just at a higher power. If you start going above this uh, compression point, then it's not going to be perfectly linear. Your input signal is not going to match linearly on the other side, and you may have some issues. So, uh, just a general rule for RF design, and I would highly recommend you know looking at a lot of these other terms as well, doing some research. It's all really interesting stuff. But anyways, that's about all I really want to cover for this data sheet. Now let's move on to the PC design. So going over the topics and the data sheets that I wanted to cover took longer than I expected. So I'm actually going to do the PCB design in another video as this one's already getting quite long. I want to thank you guys for watching today. I hope you learned a thing or two and I'll see you next time.